November 27, 2011. Roll call, please. Commissioner Smith? Here. Commissioner Messina? Here. Commissioner Mom? Here. Commissioner Roth? Here. Mayor Neely? Here. Uh, Commissioner Roth is with us on speaker phone. Um, with that, uh, there's only one item. There's no uh, pub public testimony on things that are not on the agenda. Uh, general business, City of uh, City of Oregon City assumption of the Oregon City Urban Renewal Agency obligation and its option agreement with Historic Properties LLC with a property addressed as 1743 Washington Street. I'll first of all, go to staff. Is, is it, uh, I think uh, uh, Ms. Crashauer is going to. The person. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. Um, as you know, in September of 2009, the Oregon City Urban Renewal Agency entered into an agreement to, um, with Historic Properties LLC to um, give them an option to purchase the property at 1743 Washington Street, which is commonly known as the Groco site. Um, this agreement was associated with a very complex um, agreement to purchase the historic Southern Pacific Railroad um, freight depot and move it to the Amtrak station site where we had a platform but no depot and to construct the parking lot which was comprised essentially phase two of the Amtrak pro project. Um, since then, the uh, historic properties has exercised the option and um, in finding that, and in processing, in preparing for closing, we um, determined that um, while the Urban Renewal Agency had entered into this agreement and approved it, um, we found that the property, while it had been treated as an Urban Renewal Commission property for years, um, to the best of our knowledge, at least starting in 1999 when a lease was signed between the Urban Renewal Commission and uh, uh, the person who was going to lease the Groco site. Um, it had been treated as an agency property, but the deed is actually held by the City of Oregon City. Um, and in doing further research from that point, we determined that the Street Fund purchased the property for a project that was in the transportation plan at the time, which was the Abernathy Realignment Project. Um, staff is noted that to honor the agreement previously made by the agency, which is a san city sanctioned body, and remedy the ownership identity on the option agreement, um, the staff recommends that the city assume the option agreement so the option property sale can proceed between the city and historic properties. Um, and if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Do we have any specific questions? We have come out of executive uh, session where we've discussed the various of the legal ramifications of what we're about to do. Um, uh, probably in our discussion among the commissioners, there'll be uh, references uh, out of the executive uh, session, but that won't be of any concern because we're making a decision based on that kind of information. So, uh, my my, uh, the way we're going to operate, we're going to have a discussion among the commissioners. We'll then open to public comment after our dis uh, discussion, but before we make a decision. So, uh, I'll be looking for on the floor uh, from our commissioners. I, I, I would suggest we have a dialogue first before we go into public session. Okay. Um, well, I'll say something. Um, I don't agree with the idea of transferring this property and we'll vote against this um, if there is a motion to do so. And I think this property is very important um, to the citizens over Oregon City, um, in particularly because of the approach, um, but not exclusively because of, but primarily because of the approach we're making to Amtrak. Uh, to try to get the Coast Starlight um, to stop in Oregon City. Um, I think Kathy wanted you to speak up. Um, we are attempting to get the uh, Amtrak. We've written a letter to Amtrak wanting the Coast Starlight train, which is the interstate train that runs from Los Angeles to Seattle to stop in Oregon City, um, to sell this property with tire hands 
and perhaps uh, preclude us from that approach. If we have to extend, for example, the um, platform for the uh, Amtrak station, that would uh, most likely be in the direction of this property. Otherwise, we might need it for parking uh, or for other unforeseen uses. And uh, because of what I think is the supreme importance uh, of that kind of alternative transportation for Oregon City, especially as we're trying to open up Willamette Falls as an international and national tourist destination, um, we would be doing the citizens of Oregon City a grave disservice in, um, in transferring this property and potentially damaging uh, those pro policy and economic development objectives. And because of that reason, I cannot support uh, this transfer. Any other comments? Commissioner uh, Smith. I have the same comments regarding the Amtrak station, but in addition, um, I would say that in the future, not only are, am I concerned about the expansion of the Amtrak station, but also future use um, with light rail, um, future use um, with trolley systems for the downtown. Uh, that site is a um, visitor's um, destination. Uh, across the street is the end of the Oregon Trail Interpretive Center. Um, the Amtrak station itself um, bringing people in. Um, when that area downtown is developed, um, that will be the core center for people coming into the city. And I think that we need to prepare for that. And um, I, I think that that piece of property, just the way it's coordinated with our Amtrak station, it was bought, that piece of property was purchased um, for right-of-way use. And, and I think it's, it's probably something that we're going to need someday. Any other comments from any other of the commission? Oh. Um, Commissioner Roth. Um, um, I would like to, to echo that and also the fact that I think it is in the best interest of the city, given that there was more than one opportunity to correct this mistake, that this piece of property remain in city hands. Commissioner? I'll wait until we hear from the citizens. <clears throat> I'll go ahead and make some comments at this particular point. Um, the Urban Renewal Commission owns all the land to the uh, detention pond that's owned by the Metro Transfer Station. Uh, I think that land is sufficient for even the, the Coast Starlight in terms of parking. So I, I'm not sure that's the issue. In terms of Amtrak, uh, we of course don't know where it might run. It, it may, if it's going to come on that side, it'll have to in some way cross the river 205 and the train tracks to to come on to the uh, uh, I'll call it the interpretive uh, side of the Amtrak station. Even if that were to occur, we would be able to com accommodate that in property that the Urban Renewal Agency already owns. I'd just like to make a comment here. Uh, the I, I believe personally there was a city error, and I'm not saying a city commission error. There's a city error in terms of the presentation to the Urban Renewal Commission uh, when they voted on the uh, securing this option that um, it was Urban Renewal Agency property. It wasn't. It was city uh, property, and that wasn't realized until just recently. And so staff and council failed to pick this up in the process. Uh, and. Um, I would simply state that, from my standpoint, I don't think there was any bad faith representation on the part of anybody in this particular process. Uh, I would prefer not to be in the uh, uh, operating under the standpoint that we are going to make a decision that puts the Urban Renewal Commission in bad light and. Uh, I don't know if there are any comments from the commission after my comments, but we could open up to public uh, discussion. Well, I can I can make a couple comments from yours. Um, I think you're you're right, and from my standpoint, um, this is such a, a, a gray area that I 
personally don't think um, I'm willing to put the tech taxpayer's money um, out there to spend thousands of dollars on legal fees that may or may not work. We may or may not be able to get back. Um, I don't know. I'm just not willing to do that. I think that um, sometimes bad decisions do get made. History does mess up. Cities do mess up. and. It was a huge mistake that was made, but I don't think our citizens need to pay for it. I would like to say, I don't, I'm not saying that this is anyone's, um, this is an intent on anyone's part, but given that there were more than one opportunity to rectify this, there is a time when you have to stand up and face up to the fact that you made a mistake not once but twice and take the consequences for that mistake. Uh, Commissioner Rada, could you could you speak to the opportunities? Number one was when the purchase the property was purchased, and number two was in the two thousand nine agreement, section five. Could you go be specific on section five? <laughs> Pardon me. Would you be specific on section five? Section five. Uh, well, excuse me. Section six. Okay, section, section six. six through four. Section one, two, three, and four. Would our attorney want to just state what those are? I, I, I think it was we had to be very clear of the decisions we're making, so I want this yeah. really clear on the record, so everybody understands the basis for any decisions made here. Sure. Uh, section six uh, point four of the option agreement is a condition precedent closing that uh, states sixty days before closing, option E will have obtained an American Land Title Association survey of the property from a surveyor acceptable to option E, indicating op to option e, option e satisfaction that, one, there are no discrepancies in the boundaries of the property, two, there are no material encroachments on or protrusions from the property, three, the property has been acceptable, has acceptable access to a dedicated public right-of-way, four, the property contains at least 6.8 acres, and five, property does not lie within any, in any area designated as wetlands by any governmental agency or in any area determined by the federal government or any governmental agency to be flood pr prone or subject to a flood hazard. And above that, it goes into the title stuff. Uh, if you could quote that, too. Um, and and is that the 60 days before closing option will have obtained an American Land Title Association survey, or is there another? Right. That's the one you're referring to, then? I'm referring to all of six as a, as a package. Yeah, but on the title piece, it was the piece that he quoted. Right. He did the part about, he said the stuff about the title. Okay. Thank you. Any further discussion among the commission? Mm -hmm. If not, we'll open it to a, a, repu uh, a republic. <laughs> we'll, we'll open it to a public hearing. Uh, would Kevin Hunt and Tom O'Brien please come forward? I think Kevin uh, Hunt has provided us a handout that uh, we're going to be provided to the commission. Yes, uh, through the courtesy of my side, the city recorder, I'm simply distributing and hope will be included in the official record and email I earlier sent out to the uh, city commission, the mayor, and the uh, city manager. Given the comments of the commission tonight that this is a gray area, that there's all kinds of potential legal expenses that could be uh, incurred here, given uh, the thoughtful comments of commissioners uh, Nasita and Smith, this is uh, my concern. My concern, again, is process. As you know, I have twice now appeared in this commission in recent days, and I have objected to the fact that this matter has been dealt with only in executive session or on the consent agenda where there would be no debate and no public input. Uh, I raised this objection again at the last meeting of this commission, and it was taken off of the consent agenda. Uh, the assumption that uh, I had, and I'm sure anybody uh, else who was here on that matter had, was that uh, you know, it would be brought back again before a regular meeting of the Commission. I'm not talking about legality. I'm talking about propriety. I'm talking about transparency. I'm talking about honesty and accountability. I don't see it. I don't see it when a special meeting is called 
on, on less than two days' notice, and unless someone happens to be on the city recorder special email list or happens to, to, to decide to go up to the website today, they don't even know about this special meeting held on a Thursday night in between regular alternating Wednesday sessions at an unusual time and immediately after a secret executive session where these matters are discussed. I think this absolutely is outrageous. Uh, and, you know, perhaps, perhaps you all just think that I'm just a voice in the wilderness and I'm the only person in this city who gives a damn about that, but I'm here to tell you that isn't true. My remarks last time were not perfunctory. There's a lot of people who are very, very upset about these shenanigans, these follies that are going on and have been going on. Uh, and I want to commend the commissioners who have, who have who've been on top of this and really working on it. I appreciate it. I'm not here to slam the commission. I don't know how this ended up uh, uh, being handled the way it is tonight. I'm just saying it doesn't look very good. Anybody reviews uh, what has happened the last two days is not going to think very well of it. It's too bad because we have highly competent commissioners, highly competent mayor, highly competent staff, and this sort of a, this sort of a image for the city shouldn't shouldn't be created. But I'm I'm just sorry to tell you that I've been dissuading a lot of people from taking the kinds of actions that you know shouldn't have to be taken because we like to deal with these things in a very orderly orderly way. Um, I, I've I know a lot of these people, I meet with them, I dissuade them from that, I tell them, just come to the meetings, you know, just come to the meetings and give your input. I'm done. I'm not dissuading them anymore. You may see me among them. You may see my tent pitched among the occupation. And if you think I'm kidding, well, this is not what democracy looks like. This, this right here, this is what plutocracy looks like. If you want to see what democracy looks like, wait for the occupation. I would like our attorney to say why it was necessary to have the meeting. Um, that there, you know, I, I think, let me, there um, are timelines that one of the other property, that the, the property purchaser has that um, if in fact a claim is later made may result in, in additional damages if in fact it's found that the, the city urban renewal agency is is um, liable and so it's a matter to make sure that the city was aware of uh, what issues are out there and have an opportunity to make a decision in a timely manner. Was there a, was there a date specific that uh, we had a difficulty with? I believe it's the 31st, um, yeah, the timely closing no later than October 31st, 2011. And, uh, that, that's the reason that we're having this special meeting. Just yes. wanted to clarify that for the record. Mr. O'Brien. Yes, Tom O'Brien, Oregon City. <coughs> Pardon my throat. Uh, we're all human. We're all capable of making mistakes. I know I make probably more than my share. I can see where things of this nature do occur from time to time but I think with regard to being concerned about legal situations we have three attorneys at least in the room that I'm aware of uh, it would seem to me that on property transactions if a title company is hired and paid to do a job and they did not look to find out clear title it would appear to me that they share a lot, if not the greatest portion, of responsibility. And if we are so concerned about being sued by someone, I would suggest that we consider what our position is going to cost us relative to the entire responsibilities of the title company. Furthermore, there's always been in law, as I understand it, I'm no attorney, when someone is entering into a agreement or a contract, it's kind of a buyer beware type of situation. You're responsible to do due diligence on any contract you enter into. And I think that there are parties perhaps on both sides who did not do due diligence and certainly the title company. Thank you. Do, does uh, attorney want to address the title issue at all? Um, I, I think that will play itself out as as it 
you know, to the extent that there is okay. litigation that happens. Thank you. Nancy Walters. Nancy Walters, uh, live in Oregon right. City. Can you hear? Move it towards you. Oregon City resident and also Urban Renewal Commissioner. Um, I was on the Urban Renewal Commission when uh, this uh, option agreement was um, negotiated and approved, and I actually voted for it. Um, my understanding at the time uh, was that it was Urban Renewal Agency property. That was uh, the representation we were given. Uh, by the city, as well as um, the fact that um, this was part of a federal funded project that had matching funds, and we were told that if we were unable to complete the, the project, that we would have to return almost a million dollars in federal money um, uh, that we didn't have, that money was spent. Um, we asked about segregating the, um, I, I know uh, both Rocky and I ask the question about why are these two transactions related and um, um, we were told that um, they were always considered part of the same deal that occurred behind closed doors uh, without any commissioner involvement. Um, so we were pressured at the time, I felt pressured that um, there, were, there were really no options um, other than having to return $900,000 that we didn't have. Um, subsequent to that, on April 26, we were pro pro provided with um, city property information uh, for that area um, at what time from the city, at what time the city indicated that that property belonged to the city of Oregon City. You mean so the city or city staff? City staff. From, this came from Dan Drentlaw and was shared with urban renewal commissioners. Now, I did not make the connection at the time, but we were provided with that information on April 26 of 2011. <laughs> that that property was owned by City of Oregon City. So somehow between the time that we were told in 2009 that it was urban renewal agency property, the city became aware or there was, there was some mistake uh, that was remedied without notifying urban renewal agency at the time. So now we're in a situation where um, I believe the original basis for the decision is now removed again from the transaction and the city commission is now being pressured again under timing issues as well as um, the situation that's been created to, um, to, to transact a, a deal that you again have no control over essentially uh, or at least you're being told that, that this is something that uh, you're legally bound to do as a public entity. That statement related. has not been made to us. Okay. so. I, I'm happy to hear that, and what I'd like to um, ask you to do is, is look to all the alternative solutions, because I think that the original basis for this transaction is no longer valid, and um, I think that you should really make the decision based on all of the information at, that's in the best interest of the parties. Thank the, you. I want to make clear that in our executive session and prior to our executive session, there on the part of staff or council, is there any indication that we legally should take one direction or another? The ramifications of both of whichever decision we make, the ramifications of both of this, this decisions were made, but there was no suggestion on either the part of staff or commission that we should make a specific decision. I want to make that clear. Right. I agree. Uh, it's, it's more the potential um, impact that would be a high cost um, we're talking about the, and, and that's, the liability. And that's unknown. unknown. Right. Um, so that, that's enough said. Thank okay. you. Okay. Yeah, but I, I don't want to. I don't want anybody to leave with the impression that staff or council has suggested to us that we should go one direction or the other on this discussion. I want to make that very, very clear. Uh, the air here was a, uh, a a city air in the sense that city staff and and. Uh, and urban renewal staff are really one and the same group, and they made an error, and council didn't catch that. And so uh, we became aware on the city commission at the same time 
we became aware as members of the Urban Renewal Commission of the problem at the same time you did. I, I don't recall any advance warning on that. So I just want to make that clear. Uh, I have nobody else uh, to sign up to speak. Anybody care to? Okay. I'm going to make one comment because it was alluded to, I think, in citizens' comments at at our last uh, commission meeting of um, some kind of um, um, agenda that originally existed on the part of Mr. Fowler. I can't, I can't speak to anything on motivations of Mr. Fowler. Uh, I wasn't on the commission at the, at the time the property was procured by the city, but I want to make a comment. In the period of time that I served on the commission at that time, the members of the Urban Renewal Commission were the city commission. There were no citizen members. And if somebody were to come up to me and ask me, did I make a decision on property within the Urban Renewal Agency that was a city decision or an Urban Renewal Agency commission, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know that. I'd have to go back to the minutes to know that. I just, I just wouldn't recall. And so um, it was city staff that fought, uh, failed to catch that issue, and it was, a, it was a decision by the Urban Renewal Commission based on what was presented to us at, uh, by staff, and council didn't catch that issue. So um, I don't think any decisions on our part should be attributed motivations by anybody. It should be attri attributed to error. And I just wanted to make that comment. Uh, with that, do I hear a motion or a lack of a motion? You're, you're welcome to come up. And I'm not sure it'll change anybody's mind, mm -hmm. uh, but maybe some clarity. Can we identify who this is? Yeah, I will. Dan Fowler, Oregon City. Uh, just some clarity uh, more than anything, because it, it, it may not uh, answer people's minds, but maybe it will. Um, my business partner, Mark Foley, and I and our wives, <clears throat> back in 1986, had an opportunity to move the passenger station back to Oregon City. And um, in 1983, we had purchased the property from the Hackett uh, estate where the Hackett house was, and that was our first office. And that was, um, it was quite a, um, an important building to me um, because as a, an eighth grader, um, I went to that passenger, actually the, uh, it was a freight depot behind Kruger Lumber, rode my bike down from Sunset grade school um, and listened to uh, Robert Kennedy uh, give a speech from the back of a train mm -hmm. and um, three days later he was killed in California so that um, as a young child that uh, left quite an impression on me uh, when we were approached in 86 to have an opportunity to bring that back to Oregon City um, I I really wanted to do it and um, Mark uh, felt the same and we didn't really know we didn't know what to do with it it's funny how many people think they know us and that we can predict the future and you know we were just buying property in a floodplain and trying to fix things up slowly and surely but we brought it back and we debated where to put it and how to put it on that land for a long time and ended up being where it was for years that was two years before I was even in office as a city commissioner. Um, and um, then later, um, when the idea of a platform came about, um, I'm a big train lover too, and, um, and love the idea of multimodal transportation systems for our city. And 
since 2001. It was in the city's newsletter. This has been one of the most transparent talked about issues for 10 years. So anybody that says it's not been transparent, I don't know where they've been. Um, because it's been in the newspaper a lot. And uh, we've always loved the idea of the station being someday used um, on the platform. And our two things in talking to the city staff or the city manager or anybody um, as a business, we had two things we always said. And you can ask anybody at any meeting at any time, any staff member, how we handled ourselves in these negotiations and these projects. And I know how we did, and it was totally above board all the time. I said, I just want to be treated fairly, and I want to make sure the tenants we have are treated fairly. I think that's about right, isn't it, Nancy? Word for word. And I know I'm going to go over a little longer, my three minutes. Um, that's, that was our mantra. Because for years it was in the paper that they wanted the depot, they wanted the depot. And believe me, my tenants kept saying, am I going to have to leave? And what's going to happen to me? Is the city going to take this? What, you know? And so it was, you know, no one stops to think about what's that meaning to the businesses that are here in Oregon City, even though we love the idea of moving it someday. And we said, no, we've, we've just said, listen, we'll always keep you posted, we'll always tell you, but we, we want you to know as a tenant, as a landlord, we like the idea that someday that's going to be a public entity again. Well, as it got closer and closer, now, you know, I, you know 2001, 2002, 2003, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, you know, and I'll remember, I, I was out of office back in 1999. So this is all after I'm out of office now. And... Finally, one of the tenants, they said, we got to move. We're not sure we're going to have enough time to move. And they moved out um, in 2008. And um, I couldn't get another tenant in that building because everyone knew it was moving and no one wanted to come in and be a short-term tenant. So um, it's been a little, and from a business standpoint, it's been a little um, um, impinging on us even before we actually sold the property. The city came to us. We didn't come to the city. We always cooperated. We always tried to protect our tenants. We had an agreement. We made no error. We made no error. And I'm curious, you know, that no one has asked what our development plans are. Maybe they even coincide with some of the things you're saying. Anybody care to know what we have in mind? We're a developer. We're in the Urban Renewal Agency, and we're the adjoining property owner. And we know for a fact that that area is in a floodplain. And we know for a fact that if we develop the property, we have to build a platform. Anybody want to know what we want to do? Yeah, I mean, given the issue, I don't think any commissioner is anyway, going to I'm say not going to you can, you But can I'm just, speak. you know, in other words, dialogue sometimes is a really good thing. But... Um, the city had it appraised. We accepted the values. We did. We we moved forward. We relied on it. We relied on the deal we had. It was a legal document. We've now sold property. It's sitting at an exchange company. We identified property, and if you're familiar with 1031 exchanges, that's what you have to do. We've identified property. This being the only property because that was the plan to sell and buy that property within the time frame that we had our option agreement so that quite frankly someday we could put a hotel right on that site that relates to the Abernathy Center and now that we're building our chapel and we have a year-round business that was the next phase of our project so this is a real big thing for me this is a real big thing for me and I think that there's awful lot of consideration that should be given because I think in the planning of the future, Doug, I, I agree with the things that you said, Mr. Mayor, uh, uh, in terms of if if starlight came, was there, is there still land available? But I think to somehow now as a legal entity tell a business who had a legal agreement with you for over two years that now us. we're not going to not ab with us. Abide, not abide by that agreement. 
um, or somehow when there's mistakes in the legal agreement I think the parties need to work to fulfill the intent of the agreement so I would hope that that can still happen um, I'm more than happy to share thoughts of our plans for the area um, but uh, that decision rests with you guys so I just wanted to give a little perspective thank you I hear a motion I move that we authorize the city manager to ex execute the option agreement on behalf of the city of Oregon City which which was previously entered into with the Oregon City Urban Renewal and Historic Properties to acquire 1743 Washington Street. I hear a second. I believe when I was on the speaker phone, there was about a 15 or 20 minute break to figure out whether or not the chair could second the motion. And I think it was determined by it was. the attorney that it yes, was. Yes. I will second the motion. <laughs> Any other discussion? Roll call, please. Commissioner Smith? No. Commissioner Nasida? No. Commissioner Mum? Yes. Commissioner Roth? No. Mayor Neely? Yes. Motion fails. 3-2. With that, there are no other there are no other agenda items, uh, so we're going to close the meeting.